Hi everybody, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And his goggles do nothing. The goggles that do nothing. <laughs> no, this is the Concept Crucible podcast, and we, and it is Halloween, and we are in costumes. I am Handsome Jack of Borderlands Two fame, and I am a historically inaccurate Billy Bishop, World War One flying ace. Yeah, Billy Bishop is pretty cool, but I think he crashed a bunch of planes. That's all right. You don't you don't really succeed without. Pushing the envelope just a little bit, so. <laughs> Note to self, never drive anywhere with Ryan. <sighs> Sorry. No, we wanted to talk about costumes, not how to make them or anything like that, because we don't know anything about that. But if you do want to know a little bit about that, you can go and check out a different Ryan's channel, which I will put over your face, which is Ryan Consul's channel, who makes a, he makes a ton of awesome uh, smithed and armor, and armor smith and metal and leather costumes. Mm-hmm. It's super cool. This was made by Gina who is an official rioteer, and it is also beautiful and amazing. Mm. Uh, Ryan's costume was assembled by me. <laughs> In about two minutes. <laughs> You're authentic, shut your mouth. Yeah. No, but that, I mean, that's the thing. We, don't, we want to talk about, rather than how the how-to of costumes, um, of which there are, there are tons of awesome mm-hmm. uh, places online that we'll talk about that, and we don't know anything about it. Uh, but the philosophy of costumes, the mm-hmm. why of costumes, and, and, and what costumes do when we put them on, mm-hmm. what they do to us, and what they do to the people around us, and how they change us, that is the thing that matters to me. And that is the thing that matters to me, not just about costumes, mm-hmm. but about things in general. I mean, Halloween is a holiday all about putting on a costume and being something else. I mean, literally, you were supposed to disguise yourself as something else so evil spirits wouldn't get you. Yep. And, you know, this is your opportunity to do that. But why would you do that, mm-hmm. given that we no longer have those sort of um, sort of rel- or religious or spiritual r- reasons to do so? Mm-hmm. I mean, m- most people who practice Halloween do not have that, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would argue. Or very, and, and very few of the ones even, even who, who are you know, Christian Halloween practitioners, of which I'm sure there are lots and lots, mm-hmm. um, they're not doing it to hide their kids from evil spirits. They're doing it because it's a lot of fun Mm -hmm. and because there's candy. And it is a lot of fun. Um, But first, Icebreaker, Ryan, if you had no holds barred for costumes, if you could dress up like anything you wanted, what would it be? Uh, It's a toss-up between two, but they ultimately revolve around the same theme. Uh, There was that uh, video going around, I don't know when it started, maybe it started a couple years ago, but it's making the rounds again of the person who built the realistic Transformers outfit, where it actually transforms from uh, a Transformers robot into a car, and they actually drive around a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, so it'd either be that or a Disney cast member, either a speaking role or a non-speaking role, but one of the people that dresses up in the costume and goes out and does autographs or sits on the parade, floats and waves at it. And the reason why I choose those is I like the idea of embodying a character that and this is mostly geared towards kids, but embodying a character that the kids think are real and bringing that that character to life. Um, so uh, maybe if it was a specific Disney cast member, it'd probably be something like Goofy um, or Stitch. You know, so one of those characters that um, or a, some sort of Transformer. But In just, the pre-show, Ryan, you told me that you would pick Stitch because you can do the voice. Is that true? I can do the voice, but I won't do it now. Maybe maybe we'll throw it in in a future episode, but uh, can't really do it now. Don't make me do it. On the audio, for those of you listening, I'm staring expectantly at Ryan. No, um, I can't really do it at the moment. <laughs> All right, no pressure, no pressure. Right. My costume, I thought I had to think about it, um, but I would want to dress up as a wizard, not like um, an old school Merlin stars and robes wizard, but like a modern sort of. Um, leather overcoat, Jim Butcher wizard. Mm. I mean, in that same in that same vein of, of, I would have a lot of knickknacks and things, and I would be able to give them away to people mm-hmm. in ways that were meaningful, and it would be really fun for me. The costume, yeah, it's it's, a, it's about how it affects the people around me, mm-hmm. and that to me is more fun than just becoming something else. I certainly do when I put on this costume for for headshots, where my role is that of handsome Jack. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my job is to give things away, be funny, play guitars, talk to the chat, occasionally answer questions from real people, mm-hmm. 
and, uh, you know, just generally give our players a hard time. As the main villain of Borderlands 2, I get to, I feel, I feel uniquely empowered to just run around and give our players a hard time. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. But in general, I, I, I care less about how they change me and, and, and how I feel. That's, that, those are things I leave for my clothes or for uniforms or things like that. But I care about how they, how they change other people in uniforms and, and want to do both. Hmm. Um, but why do you wear costumes? Um, so I haven't worn a costume in a long time. Um, but from what I remember, the fun of costumes typically was getting to be something you're not, at least as a kid. So like when I dressed up as Batman as a kid one time, you know, you, I, I pro tip Ryan is not Batman. No, I'm all that, you know, of at the Mm. time I dressed up as Batman, but, uh, but I remember as a kid walking around and like staring at my shadow in the, in the night and like seeing the cowl's shadow being cast. Right. And you just, you feel like Batman, you run around and this, I was a kid, I think around the time when, uh, the second Burton movie came out. I mean, I was a kid when all of them came out, but I remember, uh, I think the, uh, the first Burton movie was, uh, it came out, just slightly too early for me. To, like I, I watched it, but I don't think I really got it as a kid. But the second one with the Penguin and Catwoman came out, and I remember I was it was, it was right when I was like full on into Batman and Ghostbusters and everything like that. Um, and I wanted to be a Ghostbuster as a kid too. But um, I remember one time when I dressed up as Batman, I could see the cowl in the darkness, and like it wasn't even like a it wasn't even a proper like Batman costume it was the cowl that you bought from the store and I wore like a t-shirt with the Batman logo and then we just made this makeshift bat uh, cape out of you know like a curtain or something like that nice but it was it was a homemade costume but you just walk down the street and I felt like Batman and so uh, I imagine part of the reason why you'd want to dress up in a costume is to embody something or to to become somebody else and I feel it, like Michael Keaton Batman's a good a good name for that because then you can show up people's door as a as a as a grade eight and be like trick or treat, as opposed to now mm-hmm. when kids who grow up with Batman are like trick or treat. Yeah, give me candy. No. I want your candy. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Throat problems. Yeah, what's, <laughs> what's the problem? Give me give me those toy cigarettes. Where's the candy? <laughs> that was our audio. That was our Ryan audio blowing our levels. Spike. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I spent a lot of time thinking about costumes and, and, and uniforms and things like that. I mean, you can you can dress up to, to become someone else. You can dress up to hide who you are. Mm-hmm. I mean, masquerade balls are exactly that. You, dre- you, you you don't become something else when you put on a mask. You, you just hide who you are. You gain anonymity, mm-hmm. and that empowers you to do stuff that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do, whether that's dance with people or, mm-hmm. you know hang out or, or go to parties or, or things like that but it, it 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 gives you a different feeling you know you feel like you're sort of getting away with it mm-hmm. um, even if even if there are things that you would normally be perfectly okay to do doing it in a costume or wearing a mask feels different mm-hmm. uh, sometimes they allow you to embody a character uh, we're not gonna we're, things we're gonna bracket for this episode that we're not gonna talk about that we might talk about later in some future episode is the difference between cosplay and costume yeah and and being in costume versus cosplaying. Mm-hmm. I mean, arguably there's a Venn diagram there, but our short answer is: if you say that you are cosplaying, then you are. Yeah, and we um, definitely would want to get somebody on the show who's who's actually a, a, a yeah. more knowledgeable about that yeah. kind of stuff. But it is a thing that it is a thing that comes up, especially um, with the notion of of thinking about costumes. And, and why we dress up in them. I mean, you, you, you can you can dress up in a costume to hide who you are, but you can also dress up in a costume to show who you are. Mm-hmm. I mean, you use the example of Batman, mm-hmm. uh, of you dressing up like Batman. But when Batman, sort of in the, in the story of Batman, when Batman dresses up like Batman, he is not hiding Bruce Wayne. It is a fact that he does hide Bruce Wayne with that mask and with his mm-hmm. secret identity, but he is showing you that he is the goddamn Batman. <laughs> he is like like that is who he really is. He has to put on a costume in the same way that very few of us really feel like who we are when we are naked. Yeah. I mean the whole notion of being naked implies vulnerability. I mean as opposed to being nude which implies mystery. Mm-hmm. But we have to we have to put things on to feel like ourselves. 
and to feel and to feel sort of safe and secure and things like that. And and you can put on a costume um, to to feel like someone else or sometimes to feel like yourself. The, there are, the question is, of course, at that point, is it really a costume? No. Or is it something else? I think context also matters there too, but we shouldn't get too too far into it. Yeah. We're gonna bracket that discussion. Yeah, other things we're gonna bracket for this episode is lifestyles versus costumes. Where I mean if you are goth or steampunk mm-hmm. or um even if you're one of those people who enjoys wearing dressing like a cowboy. Other um, kin. Um other kin I don't find that other can wear a lot of costumes. They wear I sometimes see accessories like tails and ears. True. I, I, I don't know that many other kin anymore, so that yeah. that is entirely possible. But yeah, it's the same idea is that yeah. that is not stuff that is a costume. Mm-hmm. That is stuff that is a lifestyle. That yeah. is, you know, people who are you know, punks, for instance, are not dressing up mm-hmm. like punks. They are punks, and so they dress the way, that way because they like it, because it, they feel like it is part of who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not my, co- this is my costume because I don't wear this everywhere. I don't, I don't wear this to feel like me. I wear this to feel like someone else. Mm-hmm. So in the same way that cosplay in a lot of ways, it is it is costume based because you are not becoming yourself when you put it on. Mm-hmm. You are you're usually portraying a character and when people approach you, they are they want to interact with with that character. I mean, they want or or rather they want to take pictures with that character. I mean, you very rarely will you see people who take, and it, it does happen. I know a bunch of cosplayers who are like, oh, I got a picture with uh, um, Jessica Negri or something, and and you know, they're like, they're like she is awesome and she's amazing and she is really cool. But most of the time, when it's when it's people, it's like I got a picture with this person dressed as Harley Quinn and this person dressed as Batman and this person dressed as Shoujo Kakame Utena. Yeah. Or the Doctor. Or the Doctor. And that is, I mean, that is the thing is, is costumes have an effect on other people Mm -hmm. as your recent encounter with the doctor proves. Yeah. Probably shouldn't be mysterious about that. I should probably tell that story. That was my segue into you telling that story. Yes. So really, really cool story, or at least it's cool for me was, uh, the other night I was sitting at home just getting like chilling before work and, uh, it's, this is after dark. So somebody came to the door and rang the doorbell and I wasn't expecting anybody, right? Like who's coming to my door at this time? And so I opened the door, and uh, it's our buddy Ryan. And at first, I, I wasn't really all that into it. Like, I wasn't with it, so I, I'm like, I know you, but I don't know. You, I don't remember where you know you from. And he hands me, a, like, he just goes, special delivery. And I and I looked at it, and I realized that it's, like, the Kickstarter package thing kind of deal. So he hands me a box uh, that I, a, a game, he, he made a game called Evolve, and I was waiting for it to, uh, to come in. And he, instead of mailing it to me, he just decided special delivery. And... So I'm like, oh, that's really cool. While I'm trying to hold my dog back from running outside, <laughs> and so I'm bent over the entire time, looking up at him, and we're, we're talking. And then I looked down, and I saw that he was wearing white Converse. And then in my mind, I just remembered that he cosplays as the Doctor, uh, the Tenth Doctor. And then I looked up, and I'm pretty sure his, and it, he was outside in the dark, so it was kind of hard to, to tell. But it looked like he was wearing a suit. And then it just, in my mind, suddenly there was this kind of uh, gestalt shift. I was no longer talking to Ryan. I was talking to the doctor. And I just, I felt this insane giddy happiness that that the doctor stopped by my house. And dis- and he wasn't, he wasn't speaking as the doctor. He wasn't putting on an accent. He didn't have a sonic. Like, he, he didn't have any of those things. But in my mind, I made this shift in, in perception that I, I was with... The, the doctor was there and like even so when he went to take off i let the dog out and the dog started to follow him down the sidewalk so i'm like whoa hang on a second and he walked back so i could grab the dog and then he took off he started running and i couldn't help myself and i just said run doctor and it was just and i and then i i, I went home and i immediately started shooting a message to jim like the greatest thing happened to me ryan stopped by and he was dressed like the doctor and, and you know what I don't even know if he was dressed as the doctor. I think it could have been. It could have been just. I saw the shoes. I remembered that he cosplays, and I, I just my brain played a trick on me. Well, and that is and that is the thing is is yeah. is costumes and characters and whatnot do that. I mean, the yeah. the, the the thing I see at cons is uh, you you, know, you always you see people get in, in in great cosplay getting swarmed, but but part of the reason they're getting swarmed is not merely because the craft work on their costumes is exceptional, mm-hmm. which which. Undeniably, it often is. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I am wearing one of those costumes, and it's <laughs> awesome. It is very well done. Yes, I am continually amazed. But more to the point is that we we see that character, mm-hmm. and we identify with that character, and we know that that like no matter who that person is, they're a huge fan of the same character that we that we love, mm-hmm. and it, and it hits that part of your brain where mm-hmm. you're just like, wow. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, and and usually, usually at a con or whatnot, you're already in a in a headspace where you're exercising less restraint and things like that, and that's why things like spontaneous hugging happen. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's it's that is that is the 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 cool thing about costumes for me is the things that they can bring out in other people, mm-hmm. and the th- the 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 things that they draw out of other people. I mean, you, there are um, a couple of superhero groups. Uh, around, um, not like uh, the the one I always think of as the Rain City superhero movement, but but those they actually fight crime, mm-hmm. like not through vigilantism, but through citizens' arrests and and probable cause and things like that, calling the police and. But they they are superheroes who fight crime. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are lots of other superheroes who dress up like superheroes and do charity work they hand out food they you know help people with their grocery like like the but they're the the whole point is that um we are you know superheroes aren't real Mm -hmm. but they should be Uh, brantford batman yeah 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 we should get him on the podcast that would be pretty cool maybe Um, next halloween yeah i mean like some people do you know sort of strictly dress up in costume but, but a lot of people who do dress up in costume like that they go out and the thing is is that dressing up empowers them not just to do these things themselves they could do that anyway and and they are the kinds of people who would do that anyway mm-hmm. i mean if, if if that is a thing that you are so inspired to do not wearing a costume is not going to stop you but wearing the costume shows everyone else mm-hmm. and it and it moves them there's a story. I'm going to try and dig up an article on it, but um, at the very least, it is a tale that came out of the, the, the Japanese earthquake a few years back. And it was, uh, I think I mentioned it when we were talking about Sentai before, but where, where Sentai actors would dress up. Um, sentai for, for the uninitiated is, pow- is, is um, people like the Power Rangers. Because we can't actually go an episode without talking about the Power Rangers at <laughs> least once. But Sentai actors would dress up in their costumes and and go and hand out food and first and 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 aid and medication and things like that. Mm-hmm. And the rationale they had for doing that that was we play heroes every day on television. And that's it. Like they're, they're just you know this is a thing that they can do. They're not you know they're not field medics. They're not they're not you know what they can do is hand out things and what they can do for the people around them is present the face of these heroes. And that these people know and care about. And that is really amazing. Mm-hmm. And it is a thing that it is the effect that costumes have on us. Like it, it is it is the whole the same hold that narrative and characters have on us because costumes are stories. Mm-hmm. Costumes let us change stories and hide stories and reveal stories in ways that we couldn't otherwise do. Mm-hmm. I mean and clothing does the same thing, only clothing is a more contemporary and, and consistent story. Right. No, but costumes Costumes let us dramatically change our story once in a while. No, at least once a year. At least once a year, yeah. yeah. I wonder, I, I can never think, My, I, I was always one of those kids where I had a le- really elaborate, um, Halloween was much like my birthday. Mm-hmm. I had this really elaborate idea of a thing that I wanted to do that I never got around to it, and uh, then I did nothing, <laughs> or I did something really half-assed. Yep, yep, I did the same thing. One year for uh, Halloween at school, especially because there was like a Halloween costume contest, I called myself the Holiday Spook, and I wore a fedora and a shirt that said, this is my costume. Nice. And that was all I wore. Seems like a very round thing to do. Yeah. yeah no, I, I also, I, I love costumes that have like big props and stuff, but I don't like carrying big props. Yeah. So, like, they, 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 there's sort of a cosplay crucible that happens at cons mm-hmm. where you have to make this choice middle, in the middle of the day where... Like, all right, do I keep wearing my costume and maintain its integrity yeah. and endure the living hell that my costume has become? No. Or do I take it off and risk inauthenticity? <laughs> and it's a, like, it's a real dilemma. I mean, I mean, people who, who make or buy um, 
really elaborate costumes, that is a thing they deeply care about. Mm. And and that makes that problem very real. Is is I mean, I care I, I really want to have a great costume and I don't want to compromise it. But it is really hot in my power loader outfit. In my in my stay puffed marshmallow man costume. In my bomber jacket. In your bomber jacket under these lights. It is really warm. <laughs> My goggles are entirely fogged. I can tell. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. If you are listening to the audio version of this, you are missing out a bit. Yeah. Um, Ryan is slowly melting next to me. Yep. He is turning into a liquid. It's kind of wonderful. Well, that's why I'm hoping that this is just going to be a quick episode. <laughs> and, not, and not a full blank. I do. I, I mean, one of the, I don't know. The other thing we wanted to bracket that 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 I really want to talk about, but we I want to get some sort of more people and some more heads into a space to do it is body type and costumes and body imaging costumes. So our last podcast we talked about exercise because it's winter and we just had Thanksgiving and everything is well. Canadians just had Thanksgiving and yep. we're all getting fat. Yeah, um, and I'm okay with that. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's this there's this notion of 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 body type and costume. And in one at one point, from one perspective, we really enjoy challenging that, and we we really uh, love w- seeing people push those boundaries. So Ryan, um, the guy whose channel we linked at the beginning, and the guy who who was apparently rumor has it dressed up like the doctor to deliver Ryan's package, um, who is also one of our honorary riot- rioters. You can see him in all kinds of stuff. He did a great slave Leo cosplay, which is his his slave Leia outfit that he made for himself. Uh, Gina, who made this and who's been in a couple of our videos, and I will link them over Ryan's face, uh, has uh, has uh, done some great gender bending stuff with uh, Tiger and Bunny and a, and a couple other things. And there's a certain kind of 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 costume that's great, but there's a, there's also people who will give you a lot of flack if you if you don't sort of fit the mold for that, mm-hmm. and that is unfortunate, and that is a shitty thing to do to somebody. Uh, regardless of how much time they spend on their costume or whether they're a real fan or whatever. No, no, no. Just in general, that's a shitty thing to do to somebody. No. Um, but we're going to bracket that because we're not going to talk about that today. No, because no, Halloween is, is a time for fun um, and is a time for parties. I guess that is the other reason we, we didn't talk about for wearing costumes. Parties. Well, just fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, like you don't have to have a deep, meaningful reason for wearing a costume. You could... Where I mean, there are millions of people every year who wear a costume one day a year, and they they wear it to a party. These are the people who buy those, um, those like sexy nurse costumes and things like that, and and they just they wear them to a party, and you know they they have a good time, and they come home, and they put the costume in their closet, mm-hmm. and they either never take it out again, or they take it out during spring cleaning, and they're like, why don't I wear this? Yep. What was I doing? How drunk was I? I mean, and and whatever it is, maybe it's your Indiana Jones costume or your, you know, whatever. It came in a little plastic thing, and you sort of bought it at a at a at a costume shop or something because it looked really cool and you had a really good time, and that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well done. Fair play to you. I mean, costumes don't have the cool thing about costumes is they don't have to do anything that much like clothing. You can just wear it because you like it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes your costume becomes your clothes. I mean, that was... You wanted to talk about uniforms. Which is what uniforms do. Yeah. Can you do that or are you evaporating? Uh, Well, we can make it quick before I (laughs) I waste waste away into nothingness. Um, Yeah, so I haven't dressed up in a costume in quite some time. This is probably the first in in a long time. Uh, But I do have a lot of experience with uniforms. Um, I feel like you're less Billy Bishop and more Snoopy. Maybe. Um... But when it comes to uniforms, uh, so I was in Army Cadets, I was in Boy Scouts, um, working in the factory, uh, the campus response team that I was on had a uniform. Even at work for being a security guard, we have a uniform. Um, And there's something in uh, the psych literature called enclosed cognition. It's the idea that when you put on these outfits, you start to think in different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, Actually, um, uh, 
the Stanford Prison Experiment showed that. Yep. Uh, when you dress up as a police officer, you can often shift your thinking. When you're dehumanized and to- told to wear prison outfits, you can shift your thinking and completely embody something else. And I remember the first time I put my security uniform on, it's not that I felt power, I put it on and I just felt this pride in the uniform. Because I had already worked for the bar for two years and putting on a, a shirt that had the bar's logo on it and then said security on the back, I felt this just this pride of you know um, becoming important in the bar, like an important member of the team. Um, and as opposed to when you were just a karaoke host? Yeah, just, well, I mean, I was an important <laughs> part of the team, but I wasn't wearing a uniform. I was just standing up at the front with a microphone in my hand. Um, but as a security guard, I felt different. Uh, when I was in army cadets, and you take pride in your uniform, you know, you iron it, you ensure yep. that the the badges all get sewn on properly. You wear your rank when you get your new rank, and you have to rip the old rank off and sew the new one on. Uh, polishing your boots, polishing your brass, which sounds like a euphemism, but it's a real thing. You just took a lot of pride in in putting it on, and you. You put the uniform on and you went on the parade square and you stood just a little taller and you marched just a little bit more rigidly and you, you know, it's your mode of thinking changes. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I don't think... Well, you're standing, I mean, the cadets or the army or something like that, you're, you, you see a lot of people wearing that same uniform. You identify, Mm -hmm. you identify with them in a, in a, Mm -hmm. in a way. So I think, I don't think there's a huge disconnect between uniforms and costumes, uh, especially on the cosplay level, that when you put on the uniform, uh, it alters the way you think and the way you act and whatnot, especially in cosplay when you embody the character. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you put on a uniform, you don't necessarily change how you speak or change the tone of your voice, uh, but you still you still put, like, you become more professional. You, you and, recognize a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, we we did a blog post uh, ooh, a long time ago now. We'll link it in the show notes about my boots, mm-hmm. which uh, I don't wear that much anymore. But I it was one of those things that the, one of those rituals that sort of picked up my whole day was when I would tie my boots and a well tied pair of combat boots. And then was my beat up old combat boots that I did things like convocate for my undergrad in. <laughs> Because they were just they were they were familiar they were where I went everywhere but it was they were part of my sort of gym suit mm-hmm. that I would put on J- to face J-I-M the day. J-I-M suit. Yes. Not G Y M. Yeah. No. Although I would also <laughs> wear them to work out. Yeah. I've ran. I have run many miles in those combat boots. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, costumes, uniforms—they all sort of tie together. I mean, there and there and there are just as many reasons to wear a uniform out of duty, out of requirement, out of responsibility, out of you know fun. But we recognize a difference between someone who is in the is a soldier or is a police officer and someone who is dressed up like one. Mm-hmm. And, oh, there's... And, the, and the feeling is very different too. Yeah, like like I mean, the 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 notion is that you ought not to feel like you are play acting, which is exactly why imposter syndrome happens: is that mm-hmm. people who are wearing uniforms feel like they are play acting. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the, the, you 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 are not who you are the real thing, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess that that our 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 last thing I, I just I wrote at the bottom of our notes problematic costumes. We did a video on this too mm-hmm. last Halloween. Um, if you feel the need to dress up like a First Nations person, or you know, God forbid, a suicide bomber, there's there are actual costumes for that, or you know. Putting on blackface mm-hmm. or anything like that. Just just do us and everybody else, like everywhere in the world ever, a favor. And don't. I mean, cultures are not costumes. Like, you just know... Again, the, the, there's a video link if you want to go look at the Cultures Are Not Costumes video. But it, it becomes relevant every year because there are people who do it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not the worst kind of cultural imperialism. But it is the sort of casual, we don't care about you kind of cultural imperial, imperialism that is really bad. Mm. So just, uh, yeah, don't do it. Anyway, on that lovely note, we're going to go eat candy. Yep. I'm Jim. And I am Billy Bishop. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Stay awesome. What do we look like here? Oh, we look like dudes. Yep. Wearing stuff. You want a hat? I have a Viking hat.
Nah, not for this one. All right. 